In this video, it's about convolution. Is it actually possible to do inside the grid of Bitwig Studio? That's something we try to find out in this video. If you want to save some money on Bitwig Studio and the upgrade plans, and you want to support my channel and my content, then go to my webpage, use the link to the Bitwig store, use my code and save 10% on the regular price. So before I um, yeah show you what I've done and uh, what I've learned and how this works, I want to show you how it sounds. And we have here two samplers, and the first one is the, our yeah input signal, which is a vocal sample. It's time. And the second sampler is our convolution signal, and we try to mess up the first input signal with this convolution sample. And this is how the output sounds when we use here a kick sound as a convolution signal. Can try and drag in here a snare. So it's a different sound, maybe a rim shot. So this is the current state of this project, basically. So um, that's not perfect and it's not a real convolution, but it's a start. Because someone yesterday asked in the Discord, uh, is it actually possible to create convolution effects inside the grid? And I said, maybe, and I searched for information on the net. And I found this website here, it's called DSB Guide. And there's a lot of information on this website and also a whole chapter on convolution. And I also put, of course, a link in the description below so you can read it for yourself. Um, yeah, I basically want to give out this preset here to you and some of you maybe have the knowledge or the time to experiment with it and maybe make some additions. And in the end, we have together a community project where we created a small, efficient, some kind of convolution effect inside the grid we can share with the rest of the community. So um, I tried to explain what I've, how far I've come yesterday. So I read this website here and the whole concept of convolution is actually pretty easy concept wise, but it gets pretty hard to imagine inside the head because you have nested loops. So um, you have your input signal here, you can see is X and then you have an impulse response, which is H and then you have your output, which is called Y. And this is just an amplitude on waveform. Also, this impulse response is also just a waveform. And you see this graph here as some dots because it's about samples. So you have multiple samples here. It's just eight samples. So it's not many, but just to explain the concept, right? So all you have to do is, and you, you see this multiply simply. All you have to do is basically you take, for instance, take the first sample, this dot here, which is sample zero, and this, the sample zero has a value of zero. So you take the zero and multiply it with every sample in this in, 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 impulse response. So you so multiply it with the first sample here, which is one, then you multiply it with the first sample here, which is 0 0.5, and so on. And then you add it to the output signal here, right? So every time you multiply, you add it to the output signal. This means also that the output signal is always a bit longer or exactly longer as the length of the impulse response. So it's always added every time you step through the input signal here, you add basically a bit of the impulse response to the output here. And then in the end, you have a convoluted signal. It's also shown here in this graph. I think it's a bit hard to explain inside the book. I, I think it's much better to make a, some kind of animation, but you can see here uh, um, basically the input signal stepping through each of the impulse response and changing the output. So this is the output here uh, changing over time. And um, what it made it click for me was actually this small code bit here down on this website uh, because I'm kind of a web developer or was a web de developer and I'm familiar with arrays and for loops. So we have three arrays here, X, H and Y, which is our input signal, impulse response and output signal. 
and all these arrays have multiple values in inside and you can read and write with um, with the right index number and then you have two two nested loops basically four loops and you firstly iterate uh, through the input signal as you can see 0 to 80 here and for every sample then you open up another for loop and iterate over the impulse response and then you multiply the signals or the sample values and then you add it back to the original signal and also modify the already changed samples in the output that's a bit hard to grasp and it also says here down below in the in the text keeping the indexing straight in line 240 can drive you crazy and that's that's basically this line here um, it's not that you have just to simply multiply the input sample with the impulse response sample you also have to change or add to the currently output sample here and um, modify it every time you iterate through the impulse response so uh, it's hard to explain actually but when you are familiar with coding then it makes sense um, and it's also very well explained on this website here so inside the grid everything that's explained here in this code is not possible because you can firstly you can't do something sample accurate inside the grid really uh, so I try to circumvent this with this AD envelope here and you can see it's a pretty short um, attack time here exactly 0 0.02 milliseconds which should or which is aimed for targeting just one sample so um, if you use a calculator here oh, it's actually on the screen so when we take our sample rate, which is 44,100, um, which is the samples in one second. So um, we delete this. So one second is 1,000 milliseconds. And then you divide it by 44,100 um, yeah, dots or samples. And then you get um, the second. Uh, the milliseconds which is 0 0.022 milliseconds that's basically the length of one sample when you have a sample rate of 44 1 kilohertz so this was my attempt to basically target one sample so when we have in this input signal here reached one sample or when we process one sample then i'm iterating over all samples in this in impulse response because I'm using an attack time of 0 0.02 uh, milliseconds to scan through the whole sample here okay so one sample here is playing and it's still playing and then I try to iterate over all samples in this impulse response when we switch over to the next sample in this input uh, in this input signal then i'm again trying to iterate over all the samples in this impulse response and so on so basically for all samples in here i'm iterating over the whole sample in this sample so the first thing i don't know is is it actually possible to iterate through all the samples here um while one sample is playing here maybe it's not that accurate right maybe the the timing here is also you have only do two, two digits after the floating point so we can input 0 0.022 milliseconds it's a bit rounded here to 0 0.02 milliseconds so it's not that accurate so that's the first uh, compromise uh, compromise i have to do and what's then okay then i'm basically writing into an array here writing this output of this impulse response into this array and the input of this array is basically the impulse response samples 
and the currently played sample of this input signal here multiplied. And then I'm using the output of this with the long delay, which also the minimum delay of this long delay is exactly 0.0, .0 milliseconds. I don't know, it's a coincidence or it's uh, actually, um, yeah, it's made this way. So um, yeah, I'm delaying basically the output and adding it back to the next sample. So the sample is actually, uh, so the delay is exactly one sample long. So when we are here, switch to the next index, um, we are using basically the output from the index before and adding it to the next uh, index uh, position in the array. And I'm adding it back here just with a simple addition. So we kind of stepping through the input signal, multiplying every sample from the from the impulse response and also adding the last index value from the output to the next uh, index number or something like this. <laughs> and then I'm mixing everything together and that's it. So that's basically what I, <laughs> what I try to do. I, I don't know if, if this is correct and all the stuff here I'm trying to achieve here is working correctly. Um, but at least you get some kind of effect. It's time. It's time. It's time. And it changes with the impulse response. Um, symbol. Um, you also have to um, remember that also the array is only 1024 steps long, so we can't use super long, um, super long impulse responses, right? So that's, that's what I try to do. At least there's an outcome. You can change the input signal with the impulse response here. I don't know it's, if it's correct or not. So I'm giving this away. You can download it and Hopefully someone can uh, make some steps in the right direction. Uh, at least it's a start. So this wasn't really a tutorial. It was more like a vlog or documentation about uh, some advanced topics. And um, maybe some of you have some ideas to bring this project forward. So let me know in the comments if you have some questions. Also, please leave a comment. Of course, leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe to the channel and to Patreon if you want. And I see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and bye.